So let's take a look at using code blocks now for C++. Um, so this is the code blocks download page. Uh, when you're downloading code blocks, make for sure that you get a version that includes MINGW. Uh, that way it'll have the compiler in there. If you pick one that doesn't have the MINGW, it won't have the C++ compiler in there and you'd have to manually install that and you probably don't want to get into that if, if you're uh, just getting started. Um, and then make for sure that you pick the correct one for your system so there's 32-bit uh, and then 64-bit. So now let's say that you're in CodeBlox and you want to create a new project. You can open it up by going to create a new project or more generally you can go to file and then new and then project. Uh, so there are a lot of options in here. We're only just going to use the console application for now. So make sure you get that one that says console application in the top row and click go. Then hit next. Uh, make sure that C++ is selected then hit next. And then you need to give it a title. Uh, make for sure that you don't put any uh, spaces in the name and then make for sure that this is a valid location. If you don't see a path here, click on this so that you can find a correct path that's valid. If it's not able to find a valid path, it'll fail to create your project and you'll just get an error message. And click Next. Um, and then if you've installed the version that has MINGW, there's your compiler, the GNU GCC compiler, and then you can leave all these options checked. These aren't really going to affect anything for right now. And then hit finish. And then uh, double click sources to open it, or you can just open it by clicking on the plus sign, and then double click main.cpp. This is your source code here. Uh, let's also change one uh, setting while we're in here. So we're going to go to Settings, and then we're going to go to Compiler. So this is Settings and Compiler. And then um, this is what you want to look out for. So just like before when we were using Online GDB, we had it use the C++17. Make for sure that that option is also checked under Compiler Settings. Uh, if one of the older options is checked, then if you try to use some of the newer techniques, uh, it may not work. And you're using that GNU uh, compiler, so that's the one that you want to have checked. And just click on OK. And let's look at this program. It's almost the same as our previous program. It has a pound sign include IO stream, so that's a preprocessor directive. But then it has a new statement here, this including namespace uh, std. So this means that if it can't find a, a function or an object, it's going to go back to IO stream uh, in the C standard library. Uh, I should say it's going to go back to the C standard library in whatever files you've included out of that. In this case, it's IO stream. Um, it's not a good habit to get into, though, to use including namespace uh, std. There are so many different uh, objects and names in that C standard library that as you begin to program more and more and create more complex programs, eventually you might just inadvertently use something that's also in the standard library. So what I would recommend is just go ahead and take this statement out, or you could comment it out by putting the two slashes in front of it. Uh, but when you do that, you have to add the std colon colon in front of cout, just like we had in the last program. And then this one's using one other input output uh, object from IOStream, which is this endl. It's an l, not a 1. And so that's an inline, so it's just going to flush whatever's in the output buffer. So it'll print hello world to screen, and then it'll print a blank line underneath it. So we're going to also put std colon colon in front of that one so that it knows to go look for that in IO stream. Other than that, this is the same program. You could leave the empty space in the uh, parentheses empty, or you could type in void. Remember, void and empty mean exactly the same thing. And then now we'll run this program. So click on the green arrow to run it. 
gives us this option to build it since it hasn't been built yet yet we'll click yes and then it runs it prints hello world it prints that blank line from the the endl command and then it returns that zero from that return zero and then it gives us this option to press any key as soon as you press a key that console window is going to disappear and then you're back in code blocks thanks for watching